all right hey guys welcome back to my channel um so today i'm going to be discussing the different transitions to medical school you know starting medical school then the transition to the clinical years which is a whole new thing and then the transition to becoming a resident and starting your residency so i do have a special guest with me i'm going to be talking about my student perspective and then he's going to be talking about his perspective as an attending physician so i'm going to go ahead and let rishi introduce himself Nice to meet you. Uh, thanks for having me on, Precious. I'm a pediatric infectious disease doctor. I went to med school and then did residency and PEDS ID fellowship. And then um, for a, a couple of years, I worked at the CDC doing outbreak investigations and then came back and am now uh, attending. And I've been attending for, gosh, uh, seven, eight years. So um, thanks for inviting me again. Awesome. Thanks for coming on the channel. So we're just going to jump right in and talking about the transition to medical school. Um, I know for me, I was a little nervous. I didn't really know what to expect. I thought it was going to be a crazy time, so much work, so much studying. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to handle it. And I will say, like, coming into first year, it was way more manageable than I thought. And I think that has to do with a lot of I went straight from undergrad to medical school. Like, I didn't do any gap years or anything like that. And also my undergrad degree was cell and molecular bio. So like some of the courses that we took in first year, like biochem, genetics, you know, cell bio, I saw in the undergrad. So it made the transition a little easier for me. But I think one of the difficulties I had was like the volume of work. It was like times 10 compared to undergrad. And so that, that was something like I just wasn't really ready for. I don't know about you, if you took any gap years or anything like that. No, actually, um, I don't think about it now too much, but I started med school when I was 18 years old because oh, wow. I, I had skipped grades in, in high school. And so I was pretty young coming in. Uh, internationally, that's not that unusual, but in the U.S., that's unusual. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I was, I was young and I was excited. And like you, I went straight through, right? So right after I went to UCLA for undergrad and then right after UCLA, I went to UC San Francisco. And um yeah, it was the same feeling. You know, I was excited to be there, but it didn't, it honestly did not feel overwhelming for me. It mm -hmm. felt like more of the same. Um, although I will say that there were certain classes where I was completely, um, like I was not swimming at all. I was sinking. And it was <laughs> like one of those classes was renal path, for example, where I was just uh. completely underwater. Um, and that felt overwhelming uh, the way that you're talking about it. Mm hmm yeah, I think one of those classes for me was um, respiratory physiology. Just just getting that down was a little bit difficult. I think another thing about the transition is I think you really realize what becoming a lifelong learner means. Like from the time you enter medical school to the time like you retired as a physician, you're going to be learning new things. And like, you know, you can come in first year and think, oh, biochemistry, that's not relevant to becoming a doctor or things like that. But like, you need those things. You need things like embryology. And of course, they show up again on your board exam, which is really important, you know, moving forward. Yeah, for sure. And I, I kind of envied the students that I felt had such a good foundation because they would explain things, you know, to stick with your example of, of biochemistry, they would explain things um, to me, like my peers are explaining things to me about you know ATP and, and how that explains why someone's having a certain you know let's say met, met, metabolic disorder um, and in my head I'm like oh gosh yeah I kind of vaguely remember glycolysis and citric acid cycle and I, yeah I wish I knew it better because then I would understand <laughs> yeah. your explanation right now mm -hmm. um, so I, I really envied the people that had that strong foundation that that oftentimes I didn't have uh, I mm -hmm. had gaps here and there that that later had to fill in. Yeah, but I think the biggest thing about the the transitions in medical school is just, you know, having a plan, reaching out to your peers and, you know, the upperclassmen and your faculty if you're struggling because you're not in this alone. You know, it's so important to reach out when you're struggling to, you know, be effective with your time management and your studying and just be self-motivated. I think that's the, those are the biggest things that really help with the transition. Yeah, I mean, for... <laughs> That's true. I think my challenge was just um, being a little vulnerable in the sense that, like, yeah. I, I had a sense of shame, uh, especially around, like, that renal path exam, which I failed. Um, and I felt embarrassed. You know, people were like, how'd you do? And I was like, I don't know. I, I don't know yet. And I knew exactly that. I, I knew I'd failed. I just didn't want to tell people that. And that's the first step, right, to say that, yeah, I didn't do well on that test. But that's not a reflection on me. It's just, who cares? You know, I'll learn it later mm -hmm. uh, or I'll learn it again. But just even being comfortable asking for help requires you to feel comfortable 
you know, acknowledging where, where you have weaknesses, which right. is a very vulnerable feeling for sure. Definitely. I can definitely understand that because coming into undergrad, you're usually maybe the top of your class and then now struggling potentially in medical school. It's a difficult thing to handle. And I feel like that's a good segue into the clinical years, because if you don't understand something, I feel like this is definitely the time to ask for help, you know. Ultimately, like the responsibility and the patient care is left to the residents and your attendings, but you still take on ownership of the patients that you're assigned to. So, you know, if you're not understanding something, it's so important to ask for help. And I just feel like the transition to third year is just such a beast because it's like it's this weird dynamic of you're expected to be like a full time worker and at the same time a full time student. So it's like I'm towards the end of my first rotation, which is surgery, and I'm still trying to figure out the balance of, you know, how do I study for the shelf exam and how do I, you know, be in the hospital all day? And it is a tough balance. Yeah, no, I I respect that greatly. I remember feeling very, very um, uncomfortable at first and near the end of third year, I got really comfortable with the following phrase. The phrase was, I don't know, but I'll look it up. <laughs> and. I just, you know, I kind of got into a thing where I was like, I'm going to say this once a day. I'm just going to practice saying it because it's such a hard thing to say. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but I'll look it up. And at the end of the year, I just got so good at that phrase. I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know, but I'll look it up. I don't know, but I'll look it up. <laughs> right. And um, I think that that's the right attitude for most people. It's like, you know, you're not going to know a lot of stuff. That's OK. Mm -hmm. um, but to have that go get it attitude of like, yeah, but you know what? Everyone's born at the same place which is zero knowledge and so we right. all have to look it up so if you don't know something go look it up you know that's mm -hmm. it's, as, it's as simple as that yeah and i think now it's like it's no longer a multiple choice exam like you know you need to know these things for your patients and things like that and i feel like coming into to third year i have like a new type of motivation to study it's not to study to do well on the exam but it's to study to do well clinically like you want to be the best clinician you can be. And I feel like that's now my motivation to get up, you know, every day and study as much as I can. Yeah. And tied to that, I also love the look on a patient's face when you can explain something to them that they understand that, you know, their own disease more, more comprehensively. And so I love learning things about a disease so that I can be like, hey, uh, did you know, did you know that, you know, when you're feeling really tired, the reason for that is that your blood glucose levels are actually high but it's just it's not in the cells mm -hmm. and and that's why you feel so fatigued it's like it literally it's there it's just it can't get in um mm -hmm. and pa patients are like oh that's so interesting and that's so fascinating and in my head yeah. i'm like yeah that's why i looked it up that's why i learned this thing exactly that's why i care about this you know yeah i think another important thing is that like you know you can come into third year even if you're set on a specific specialty let's say pediatrics for example like it's still so important to have an open mind to all these specialties. You might think, how is surgery related to pediatrics? But for me now, like I'm interested in emergency medicine, but being on surgery, I'm on my trauma service now. And like, I've been working on the floor a lot and it's so much about managing patients. You would like coming in, I didn't think of, about surgery being, you know, managing patients being on the floor, but I'm learning so much just from being on the floor. So I feel like from each rotation you go to, it's so important to just soak up as much as you can and just have an open mind. Yeah, that's actually an interesting point. I didn't uh, know you'd bring that up, and that's really cool that you did because I remember my first rotation, I was like, it's going to be my throwaway rotation where I just kind of get my feet wet, but I don't yeah. care about it. Right. And it was um, it was neuro and psych. Okay. And the part that I thought was the real throwaway was psych. I was like, I'm definitely not going into psych. Yeah. Um, and, and now today, I'm a pediatric ID attending, and I see these patients come in, and 80% of what we talk about is psych, you know, in the sense of like, What's going on in your life? You know, yeah. tell me more about your your feelings. You, you're feeling depressed about this condition. Talk, let's talk about that. And mm -hmm. so I wish I had actually taken it more seriously at the time and recognized, as you currently do, like yeah. the interconnectedness between these different professions and how you can learn a lot. Even if you think you're not going to go into it, you'll learn a lot from it if you take it seriously. Right, right. And before we jump into the next transition, like from your time as a resident to now being attending and maybe dealing with students like that, do you have any advice for like how to, I guess, you know, do well on the wards and just gain that confidence in yourself as a new third year student? Yeah, I, you know, I, um, I love being around uh, med students because they, they infuse the whole hospital with a sense of vitality and excitement yeah. that, um, that a lot of times at the end of the year kind of fades as people get more worn down and tired. Mm -hmm. When a new batch of third years comes into it, I, get, I think everyone gets like buzzes with excitement. So it's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I think third years bring is that like, 
that really clever question or they think of a thing through a different perspective like oh but should we also be thinking about xyz and you're like yeah you know what i never think about that but that's a great thing to be thinking about vitamin d deficiency can cause this that's a great point right level off so i think um that's the the value add i think a lot of medicines a lot of times medicine see themselves as just like uh, a bit of a dead weight on the team. Like, oh, I, I can't offer anything. And it couldn't be further from the truth. Medicines are so good at asking clever questions and being really passionate and interested, specifically in patient care. So, I mean, that's the thing I would suggest is like make yourself a really strong advocate for your patient and say, look, does my patient understand everything that's going on? Do they feel like this is the best possible hospital experience they could be having? You know, and if not, in what ways can I help to make that better for them? Right. Those are things and perspectives that I think a lot of times I miss or I don't catch. And so that's the piece that I'm always looking to my med students to to get from me. That's the complimentary piece that they offer. Uh, yeah, that's awesome that you said that because along this rotation, I have felt a few times like, okay, like what's my purpose here? Do they really need the med student around? So that's nice to hear that, you know, there is some benefit, you know, to the team to having the med, uh, med student around. Oh, totally. It raises morale and yeah, the patients are happier, like everyone's happier. <laughs> right. That's awesome. And so the next transition is what you're going to, you know, provide the knowledge about is the transition to residency, you know, going from fourth year now to being able to write orders, you know, the one that can really take care of patient control, like the transition from fourth year to residency. Yeah. And so um, my best piece of advice around that is uh, being able to stay calm under pressure. You know, as a resident, I felt like I was being torn in seven different directions at once. And sometimes it was hard to know which one was really important and which one was less important. So for example, do I really need to go and you know, uh, quickly be at that patient's bedside or should I just call this chest x-ray and, or follow up with the GI consultant? Like which one do I do first? Mm -hmm. um, all of them seem equally important at first. And as you get into second year and third year of residency, you start realizing like, okay, actually being at the bedside for this patient is really important and then I'll call the consultant and then I'll follow up with that x-ray. Like yeah. that's the right order and it kind of becomes automatic. Um, and, and being an attending, it's kind of even more that way. But I think that that initial feeling flustered um, can be okay. But then there's like being flustered about being flustered. You know, there's mm -hmm. like being guilty about feeling guilty or being sad about feeling sad. You know, there's yeah. that meta level. And I think that's where it becomes problematic. I think it's very okay to feel flustered. Mm -hmm. That's natural. But then you shouldn't like get hard on yourself for that or be down on yourself for that. Be like, oh, I shouldn't feel it. No, that's pretty natural. And I think just right. the more you can let these feelings kind of roll through you and be like, hey, it's first year of residency. I'm an intern. It's cool if I don't know anything. It's cool if I yeah. you know, feel like I'm bothering someone. That's normal to feel that way. The more you can kind of just talk yourself into like, this is normal, the better off you'll be. Is there any way you can really like prepare for that? Because I know during fourth year, fourth year you can do away rotations, you can do like uh, sub eyes, like acting internships. Is there any way to really like prepare for that transition to entering year? Yeah, I think that the big yeah, I think sub eyes help for sure. You know, when I did a sub eye, I took on like four patients, and when I was an intern, I took on seven. So mm -hmm. having four was like good prep for doing seven. You know, um, mm -hmm. I think that helps. I think the thing that weighs on people's heads a lot is like oh i'm an md now i'm writing orders and then right. if i write the wrong order if i you know what if a mistake happens you know there is a system in place in most places where you know a resident will oversee or an attending will oversee that so i would um not worry as much about that like most people have a lot of oversight that is going to protect a patient from a medical error um mm -hmm. but it is a different psychological place and so i think just getting used to that um, just takes time and is, is mm -hmm. going to come naturally for sure. Yeah. So I think the biggest takeaway from like, this discussion that we had, like for me at least, is that like the transition to medical school and the different parts of medical school and through, and through residency, like it is a journey. There's going to be highs and lows. And I feel like just always reaching out to the people around you and knowing that you're not in this alone. You know, there's so many people that did this before you. There's so many people coming after you. And like, whenever you feel like you're sinking, whenever you feel like you're having a hard time, just talking it out can really just make a big difference. Yeah, I, I um, use this analogy of like your horizontal family and your vertical family. Mm -hmm. so your horizontal family is your cohort, right? Your classmates, that's your horizontal yeah. family. And your vertical family is like all the people that have gone ahead of you and those that will come 
behind you, right. like doing the same journey, right? So there's value from talking to your peers. There's also a very different value from talking to your attending or your fellow um, because that's your vertical family. And then the third type of family is like the, the context that you're in, right? So it's not just that you're a, a, a med student or a doctor or a resident. There's also a, a phys- you know, physical therapist there. There's a nurse there. There's you know, a patient there, a family there. There's all these other people, mm-hmm. and that's also part of the context. And so in terms of reaching out, talk to the janitor. Talk to the person that works the lunch line. Talk mm-hmm. to the people that, you know, all those other faces are all part of it. And they've seen people like you come and go. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of um, camaraderie and, you know, help you can get from those allies as well. Yeah, that's really true. I've heard a lot from interns, like your nurse can literally be like your best friend, you know, or kind of your worst nightmare if you're on their bad side. But the nurse can really be a great ally for you while you're on the floor. Yeah, for sure. And the nurses are definitely like the first group I always think of, like, because they're Mm -hmm. always around and they're always at the patient's bedside. Um, But I would extend it to like just all the folks in the hospital, including patients and families, et cetera. Um, I often talk to my patients and I'll say like, (coughs) you know, have you gotten to know Precious Uh, in the the case that you were working with me? Mm -hmm. And they'll say, oh, yeah, Precious is great. You know, she came by earlier today. She's a, Or they might say like, I don't know who that is. Yeah. And that already tells me a lot about like whether Precious has taken the time to get to know her mm-hmm. patients, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's also really helpful because all those different folks are going to be weighing into like their the experience of, of you know, your journey that you're going through. Yeah, makes sense. Well, I think we've had a great discussion. Um, you know, nobody really knows what to expect going into medical school until you're there, you know, or maybe you have a family member or friends that's done it. But until you're in it, that's when you, you know, you really experience what medical school is all about. It, it is a crazy journey. But so far for me, it's been fulfilling. I think third year has really opened up my eyes. And it's like, wow, like I'm in this now. I'm finally able to treat patients, which is, which is very fulfilling for me. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. I appreciate this this opportunity. The last thing I will say is that every um, physician I know has also been a patient at some point. And so, and, and if you haven't been a patient, you will, you know, uh, or you'll be at the side of a patient, like your parents or your family members. So mm-hmm. it's it's a real honor to be on both sides of it. And so it's a pretty cool thing to, to be able to witness that and participate right. in being on both sides of that. All right. All right, guys, thank you for tuning in once again this week. And if you have any questions about the various transitions to medical school, you know, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Either myself or Rishi um, can hopefully answer it the best we can for you. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Take, Take care. care.